Uh, we're going to start uh, with Star Citizen Live today. I'm on the fence if this one's going to be any good. It's new player experience. The new player experience has been pretty iffy, uh, I would say, so far, uh, but obviously has opportunities to improve over time. But I think it was like a, a definitely a good start. So I, I imagine it's not going to be the best Star Citizen Live in history. But you never know. Todd Pappy is there. They might touch on a little bit more 319 stuff. Uh, I know nothing about this episode. So hopefully it's decent. Let's see. California Love that you're intending to get. And you'd always get some other version of California Love. It's like, why do, why do I have the remix? Why do I have, you know, there's a version that focuses more on Dre, a version that focuses more on Tupac. And it's like, I just want the original that I grew up with. Like, is that so hard? Like, Thank you, Reezer. You know what I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. You know about. what you're talking about. James has no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to another exciting edition low. of Star Citizen Live Game Dev, the improved new player experience. I'm your host, Jared Huckabee, and we're just talking about the, the discography of Tupac. Joining us on the show this week are uh, senior members from our Star Citizen development team. We've got uh, Star Citizen Live Game Director, Mr. Todd Pappy. Hello. And uh, uh, lead game designer? Yeah. <laughs> James K. How you Hello. doing, man? Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, because this is always That's somebody we've never show, seen let's before. Do some quick introductions besides what I just did. Todd, who as are far you? As far as I'm aware. What do you do for Star Citizen? Uh, I'm a game director on Star Citizen, so Tony and I are the co, co game directors of it. Um, but I watch over more the player experience and, and basically what players are doing moment to moment, as well as content going into the game. Gotcha. And James? Um, I am the lead content designer. Did he um, mention Tony we Z? We focus, I would say, mostly on missions, but is, there's all kinds of curation going on. Um, so it can be location setup, lootables, mineable distribution, things like that. So Sandbox experience as well as missions. Sandbox, yeah. Oh. You take the, the stuff, all the tools. So he, he moved the lootables and mineables around, or he like made it happen? Because that was a big change and a good one. That are created by like MFT and whatnot, and then put them together in yep. different and exciting ways. Yep. So he and leads then the create team. Create that list of requests. Is Sam like, under hey, him? I really want to do this, but I don't have the module I need to do this, and it's like that. So, all right, cool. We've had MFT on the show a bunch of times in the last couple months, so it's nice to get on the other side of that and see how that works. Um, today's show. Yeah, he is. Okay, understood. Now is about uh, one of the new features that are coming in three nineteen. Uh, the improved new player experience. Um, but before we get into that, I want to talk about creating things for new players to begin with. Um, Star Citizen is a notoriously deep or heavy game to try to... Tr deep? It's just, com it's just unpolished. It's just, it's just completely unpolished. That's what it is. So it makes a new player... It, it's totally just garbage for a new player because people aren't it's not polished enough i think that's really all it is try to get into oh my god jared is a monitor of the video there right there so he can see what camera they're on that that's kind of wild i think that's what that is you know to try to just walk into off the streets yeah the learning uh, curve is the learning curve is, is yeah. huge it extends even to our website <laughs> you trying to have the time trying to figure you know out what what, what, what you want to do shout out to turbulent i'm going to get an email letter from uh, from benoit on that uh but uh it's really true well. though uh we have tried a tutorial before mm -hmm. uh many years ago um talk to me about that first effort well it was I cool mean, Basically, obviously, that one was hand scripted from end to end. And so, if any new feature came online, anything else that the player needed to learn came online at that point in time, it was very difficult to separate things and move them apart and then interject new aspects of gameplay there. Um, so, it really fell to the wayside, you know, as, as we were so heavy in development at that time. Mm -hmm. um, so, it Upkeeping that thing just became too big of a task, so we we let it slide, and we knew that we were going to come back to it at a later point in time. It was also outside of the persistent universe. Correct. It was yes. in its own little pocket yes. dimension, you know, based off the old hangar module back Correct. then. Yeah. Do you remember what that old flow was? No. <laughs> 
No, I I, I don't I, even I remember. Re recite it off the top of my head. Well, so. there, 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 there was Gunny. Yes. And there was a magnificent uh, a score from uh, Pedro yeah. that was very um, inspired by a popular uh, 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 aerial dogfight combat movie that I'm not legally allowed to acknowledge it was inspired by. And, when I, and, it, was, and it, was, it was an experience, you know, getting in and, and taking off and flying off. But again, limited. Yes. Uh, strictly to the flight and takeoff experience, and it existed before the Persistent Universe. It was, yeah, way yeah, before. it did. Yeah. It was an so, Arena Commander so thing. You, men you mentioned this. I, w I want to touch on this before we get deep into the new thing. Developing a tutorial develop while you're still making the game, while you're still adding stuff to the game, that seems crazy. Well, uh, I, I think now we're it's so less far crazy along. now. Like we we know what our base hero mechanics are from a from a player perspective. We know what our base mechanics are from a ship perspective. So I think right now is is one of the best times to be doing it. Um, but you know, in previous games and everything like that, first level and last level were always the ones that we built, um, just because you understood, you know, here's everything that I need to teach, and then I can do it at that point in time. Um, How interesting! But since we have such a high learning curve, you know, we decided, all right, there's certain things in here that um, we needed done first, and uh, we felt once those were completed, um, and really that to me was the contextual controls and contextual hints. Um, those were the biggest things and and everything was built around that um, thought process and, and what we wanted to teach. Uh, are, are there sounds around the hints? Um, like when they pop up to kind of... Like, hey! Um, and then from there, we felt like we can add on certain things later on and uh, have it be still... Uh, a cohesive experience, but um, also at the same time, uh, drip feed it a little bit better because right, you know, I think getting in and playing it um, and not having some of those hints, some of those controls that uh, because you know, I don't know all the keyboard and plus some um, <laughs> with uh, all of our shift modifications and everything, like it, it's um, we wanted to make sure that. Uh, the players could always remember it. Oh, you know, let's say they went away for two weeks or three months or whatever, and then they come back to it. It's like, how did I do this again? So on and so forth. So three months is a good number. You know why? Because the game's only good enough to check out the new patch when it comes out, and then wait until the next new patch. It, it, we wanted to kind of always have those constant reminders there, and then that's really. I think that number is coming from us, somewhere. You know, from some data. Us. So what were the big so, we're, so moving into the, the we've, we've now we're now getting ready to release our first version of the new player experience. It won't be the last one, as you said. We'll continue to iterate on it. Uh, before, as we're starting on this process, what were the high level goals? What what did we know we absolutely needed to? Having a tutorial when many base game loops don't exist makes little sense. This is usually why the game in isn't in a state isn't out yet. It does have its base things. You walk, you run, you fly. Uh, you land at a st you land, and you put stuff on and off. Like all of that stuff exists, and it that's what uh, Todd's trying to say. Because there's no like bustling economy and good like really solid missions and storyline in the game, doesn't mean that they can't tell you how to take off from a from a station, right? So, the the steps you need to get into whatever the base game ends up being. That's uh, that's all kind of there. What were like the biggest ticket items? Like we've got to help people with this. We got to help people. So, with this. for for from my standpoint, because I was the one who write, wrote the initial doc, um, it was really teaching the player um, very very core basic things. So like getting up, moving around. Yeah. Um, what are the basic controls for this? Interactions, um, you know, eating, drinking, um, anything that will kill you, you know, if, if you don't do it. Um, and then uh, once you start getting into other aspects as far as what happens when you buy something, and we have a, a deeper thread there that we haven't unlocked yet, you know, as far as being able to go and use a weapon or be able to go and try something out or, or being able to try and compare and, and all of those aspects that need to be taught as well. 
Then there's the player combat side um, from an FPS, and then there's the ship combat side. So like us, but just those need very to hold high level, high level things. Which would I think those need to hold because those are still very much fluid at the moment. But like getting up out of your seat and stuff. Opening a hangar door, I think that all that's pretty much locked in. It was teaching you, you know, interaction, teaching you how to um, eat and drink, teaching you how to deal with inventory. You know, it, it, we still need to teach more on that. Teaching you how to walk and run and jump and, and then being able to teach you how to get out of, you know, the spaceport and, and fly your ship. Um, but still trying to dole that out and... and um, um, kind of have some of those repetitious experiences that sometimes people need to to do to, to actually learn it properly. Yep. So we have a video we're gonna we're gonna start here in, in a moment and do some commentary over it. Uh, but it, it's it starts once you're already in the universe. So let's, I want to start. I want to go oh, even cool. before that. So you've looked. So the new player has you know pledged for the game. They've downloaded the game and they've they've started it up. Uh, how do they does it does the game automatically put them into the new player experience does it give them an option so on the front end when you first load boot boot the game up um, we ask the player do you want to um, do you want to take part in the new player experience um, if they do then we will set their start location to area 18 because that's where the new player experience takes place and then we will guide them through the process. Um, I wonder why they chose that. So as soon as they're in game, the uh, mission is accepted and we will guide them through, as Todd was saying, all the basics, eating and drinking. And we will guide them through a Area 18, onto the tram, over to the spaceport, into their ship, and then flying around. So yeah, it's, uh, we, we, we start right at the beginning. Cool. So let's go ahead and start our video here. So this, starts, this video starts, we've gone to the main, the main menu, we've selected the tutorial, uh, let's go ahead and put this on screen here. So now we are obviously about to wake up in our, uh, where are we? In, um, in so, the hubs. Yep, this is your hub in, in area 18. Um, so you spawn just as you would spawn normally, except in this case, there's the, uh, there's the tutorial running already. It seems a so bit quiet Moby now. Was another thing How's the volume, guys? Teach. So, um, and also the other thing with this room, the idea is that you're locked in this room. Like obviously with Persistent Universe, there's not too many places. Sounds like Jared's guys are playing with the audio. Space. Um, you know, like a traditional tutorial would be, uh, let, let's pause the game. Let's, um, you know, make it so that the player has to push this button for it to continue and, and so on and so forth. How's that? So That's as high as I can go here, pretty much. You know, in certain areas, but once you walk out of the hab, you're free, you know, and and trying to teach that like it, it's 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 very difficult. Yeah, you don't have that. It's like when you ignore a GPS, and it's like it's telling you to turn right, and you don't turn right, and it reroutes. We, we don't have that. Yeah, so. yeah, not yet anyway. Um, so how did you? Well, rather, why did we decide on our corp? What? Um, well, the the thought process behind it was uh, basically we have two locations that in order to get to you know our central or our shopping area you can walk directly from uh the habs ah. to the shopping area um and then you've got some that you actually have to get on to the tram to so um Airy teen and lorville are the only ones that you can walk to the shopping area other ones you have to um, new babbage and horizon you have to go to um, even they the, don't want to ride the tram. the tram first so um, we wanted to all the fact that they don't want to show the new player their tram system. Interesting. Also just teach the player. All right. Hey, this is clean and simple. It, it, it allows you to go shopping. Um, and then also with the, with cubby blast, this one made sense from an armor and weapon perspective to, to lead the player there to that point. This is my first time watching this video. I'm gonna go back. This looks like like we're teaching people to drink their prime, their prime energy drink here. I, yeah. I never realized how much this bottle looks like the prime. Yeah. Sorry, I was yeah. watching a lot of WWE yeah. lately. Okay, so we're now outside of our. Oh tab. my God, Jared's mic. And where are we being directed? I'm cleaning my glasses. I can't read it. Um, so right now the players exited the hub. 
And uh, this is like the redacted podcast all over again. Cubby Blast, um, so they can um, they can get some experience um, in a shop. Basically, um, the main thing we wanted to teach there was uh, you don't talk to the NPC behind the counter like you do in most games, but you interact with the kiosk. So we're breadcrumbing the player um, down th through the uh, through the elevator, which will be the first time that they've used an elevator. So we guide them to the little panel next to the next to the elevator itself and teach them to interact with that. And then when they get in, tell them which uh, which floor that they need to go to. And um, there's to be honest, there's not really they can't really go wrong at this point because there is no other exit than the elevator. But yeah, you know, it's it's theoretically it's literally their first time in game, so. Uh, it doesn't do any harm to put a little little marker over the elevator panel and say, "Hey, press this." Hey, well, I'm and I, I was going to say, at, at every fork in the road, um, you know, uh, through the landing zone, um, basically, the branding team and and the environment art team have gone through and said, "Okay, oh, yeah. if if you go this way, then you this is what you get. If you go to the left, then you get you know this other." Um, you know, experience uh, or yeah, shopping the new signage so is good. So, so it, it, this is something that we will roll out to every major landing zone, and then we'll also f figure out how we can do it in space stations just so that you know it's very, very clear um, for the player to understand where they can go and what they can do. Yeah, we're going to see more of this as this goes on, but I'm glad you shouted out the, the branding team and their work. The, the signage change in our corp is huge. Yeah. Their frame uh, rate's pretty bad. Know, when I first heard it, like, adding this. signs, I'm like, okay, I'll admit, I kind of dismissed it. Like, you know, you're going to add some signs, some directional arrows here and there, and seeing the, the sheer amount that they've done and, and, and how effective each one is, uh, I was like, oh, Oh yeah, okay. Like the, like this, we're coming up on the, you know the first big obvious one, a brand new kind of overhead map to Area 18 here. Yeah, it, I mean, it took us a while too to go through and work out. Obviously, um, you know, for every ma good. major landing zone, we want it to feel uh, unique to itself. So, for example, um, you know, an airport sign in Germany is different than an airport sign in the UK versus it's yeah, different it in, in, in the US, but it, it still has something to do with an airplane, you know. Um, oh, same with food, um, you know, in Asia it would be different than, than uh, in Europe. So there's certain um, terminology and certain things that we look at um, to uh, basically say, okay, hey, this is this is something that we can carry through, but this will feel special for our corp versus, all right, when we do Lorville, it'll be a different, somewhat different icon pass, but it's got to fit still in this, this box. So this is the part where we've already forgotten what we're here to do, and we're, we're rechecking. <laughs> uh, shout out to Sam Molina, who uh, recorded this for us earlier in the day. Oh, this is Sam, okay. Earlier in the week, brother. Yeah. Sam, I'm disappointed that you did not give the person your hair or your beard. <laughs> oh, Sam's um, in the game too. You mentioned the work, so, so we got to come into Cubby Blast. And we got to talk to the Sam's kiosk good as people. opposed to the shopkeeper. That is obviously a that goes back to the creating tutorials and experiences for a game that's still in development. Yeah. Obviously, we want folks to one day eventually interact with the shopkeepers. That's what they're there for, and stuff like this. But this is a good example of something that you do an interim version of this experience now. Yeah. And then you'll have to continue to update. Well, and and even with this, I um, think all the so devs are example, good people. Like you go in and buy a weapon. Nah, like Elliot we want sucks. you to be able to go and test the weapon so that you don't have buyer's remorse. You know, all right, I'm spending my hard-earned cash on this. What am I actually getting? Yeah. You know, does this fit my playstyle? So it's that to me is is going forward in the future. Like this is one of the big things that was called out in the original new user experience that obviously hasn't made it to this one. I did notice that Sam is a dirty cheater and he started his new account with a million UEC. Oh. He's on the PTU, Sam man. Expected better. We all get a million UTC, uh, right, UEC. So you, to, to this tryout, uh, I'll follow up on this. You're talking about like giving Jared. Cubby Blast like a firing range kind of thing? Or? Uh, the, whether it's a firing range within its actual location, so it's, it's like a, um, you know, the player actually walks up to it or via SimPod or something. So. Okay. The, but the, the 
the idea is for the player to be able to go. Why and, does Sam have everything on his account? Different. Uh, All the subscriber weapons, gear. Um, ships, so on and so forth. So like, um, you know, if, you, if you're buying a ship item or, or something, oh, I want to buy this power plant versus this other power plant. Like, you want to be able to go and test it and, and see if it fits now, your playstyle. Was there a prompt that told him to go into his inventory and I missed it? No. Not, not at the moment. Um, some of the feedback we got. But was the PTU that build is what, we where we have it all, Phil. At least telling players. All those items. They might and need a helmet. In yes. the tutorial and everything. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I was, I was space, waiting until we got to the genie to, yeah. uh, to bring that up. But I was just noticing in that moment, yeah. it's like that, that seemed to be Sam possessing some knowledge already that, yeah. you know, well, uh, you know, that I need to go to my inventory to do this stuff. Yeah, so right, right now we, we encourage the player to buy a helmet and maybe in a future it iteration um, we can sort of incorporate that into part of the flow. Um, but yeah, Sam's got special knowledge. I, I think we're, we've said this before, and I think we're going to reiterate it a couple of times. Like mining, like salvage, like any other. It doesn't gameplay say feature, test version. A, true. The player experience is something that will continue to evolve and be iterated on. Uh, maybe not every single patch, but in subsequent patches. Yeah. You know, not just for the new features that come online, but per feedback, per yeah. you, you know, study. You know, it's. Well, and, and to, during. Um, a summit, you know, Chris and myself and other directors, we, we had a very long conversation in regards to, you know, what will the final, you know, new player experience look like? And, you know, the, the bare bones aspect that we're building here, you know, it might be that we start, start at a different place besides your hab, but we're teaching you the same exact things. We're teaching you, you know, the, the very basics. Um, and then from there, again, we wanted it to be kind of a, a small bite-sized, you know, gameplay and then unleash the player into the world because, again, we don't know what you're doing. It could be that, right. that you're uh, going through this experience just to meet up with some friends. And you know what? They also don't know what ships you own. because, And that's, that's a whole other thing with buying ships is... It would be way easier to make a new player tutorial if everyone started in the same place. So you go, this is what you have. This is how you turn it on. This is how you turn it off. This is where you would go to upgrade it. This is where you what you would do to upgrade it. This is what you would do next. Um, you know, this is these are the logical steps in the game. Considering you skip all of the steps in the game, what are you supposed to do? you know, we don't want to keep you from that. So, um, but we want to at least be able to, if the player needs to have their hand held a little bit, we can, we can help them out. I want to, I want to shout out the branding team again. I'm trying to remember, uh, the name of the, of the, of the guy in charge right now. I can't. Nick Forte and, Nick. and, and then Dominic also did a lot of this as yeah. well. Another shout out to Nick and Dominic. Just, it's, I mean, this this is the same Arc Corp. I mean, we, we, Arc Corp's been around for a while. Arity has been around, but I mean, it it is, it, it is transformed by these signs. I don't want to oversell it, but it really does. You're o like you're overselling it. So it. Much better than it was. You're overselling it. Well, relax. I think. Other landing zones. There's so signs. This is something that we know we need to take, you know, to the it's other good. landing zones and and um. But it's basically it's still Arc Corp. Throughout the year and and um, going forward. <laughs> I think he's just, uh, you know, so trying so to be nice to the guys, on but the right, the, 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 the one that's kind of just managing our, what are those, those are the, the objectives there on the right? I, I've got the well, those glasses are on there. Yeah. The, 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 was that a new system with uh, with the blue bar at the top? I, I don't remember seeing that before. Um, yeah, so... Oh, look at that. I can't read it anymore. This would be kind of at the bottom in yeah. the center. And um, we've got some um, tech which kind of makes them, you know, dresses them up a little bit, moves them up and to the right. And just below that, we've got the new uh, context, contextual hint system. Uh, I noticed that when you open up the Moby Glass, we had text on text. And that's, it, that's one of the things we need to fix. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We, we know that um, basically with the old Moby Glass, it needs to burn in hell. <laughs> And then with the, the visor, um, okay, you know, it's, that's a, it's being worked on. I, I like that we're hearing that. I, you know what? If we take one thing away from this episode, it's that they're on the same page with us uh, as far as the Moby Glass goes.
right? And, and being adjusted. Uh, hold on. Can we, can we switch to Todd's camera, please? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Todd, we just look right right into the camera there yeah. and, and tell Moby Glass what you think of it? It needs to burn in hell. <laughs> very, very deep hell. Okay. Let's go, let's go ahead and go. No, don't go to me. <laughs> no, I don't want to be any part of that. All right. Uh, so we're on the tram. Always a, always a cool experience your first time. Yeah. Less so your 100th or 200th time, but. So we got, we got some new tech. Um, that enables us to figure out when the player uh, oh look at this picture in picture any kind of transit entity we didn't have that before so anytime they get in or out of an elevator or on and off tram um, we can we can know the picture in picture is covering the new player hints though <laughs> uh, where they are what what uh, transit entity they got it, it just was um, yeah. i think that's um, a good example of the functionality that we got for the new player experience that we can now use throughout um throughout any kind of any mission activity in in uh, in the pu well and, and and i think one of the things that needs to be talked about is is the contextual controls and the amount of work that um, a lot of the, the code team did, you know, is going through and adding these hooks um, for every No one watching the SEL are new players. What's being Zero. shown there is, is as, as appropriate as possible at that time. Um, and that was a, a long experience and it took a lot of work to go back and forth between um, the designers and the team on that. So, uh, but Basically, you know, it, it's it's something that we felt, um, you know, was the core of the system, and and basically what the the new player experience was was all wrapped around. And I want to address some of the folks who are commenting on the frame rate. Uh, obviously, there's a couple of factors at play. One, this is still a work in progress build, unlike any, you know, just like any other. This is pre-release content. Um, there's a misconception that every single member of the team has the most powerful rigs in the universe. They don't, uh, you know, especially, you know, designers, content designers and live designers, stuff like that. Also, you know, he's capturing at the same time he's recording on the same machine and, and he's running, running his server. own server and, and his own running his own server. Services. So this is, yeah. you know, it's, it's one of those things we, we make do with what we got in order to make the show possible, but uh, yeah, your experience will vary if you're just playing. Like Don't they have like a game capture team that does these things for like ISC and stuff though? I'm confused. They couldn't run 15 minutes through the tutorial? They're doing the ship sales. You got, we forgot. We're doing the ship sales. And not doing all these Forgot about so that. I, I think Very this needs important. to be talked about. And if you want to explain a little bit more, James, on, oh, about the, on the ships. Yeah. yeah. Um, so for the new player experience, um, we've basically gifted the player a rented Pisces. Um, the reason we do that is so they have a suitable ship to learn in. Um, we don't sort of completely lock them out from any, any purchase, purchased ships. Um, they get unlocked at the end of the new player experience, but for the for the very first flight, and if you want to, the, the flights uh, subsequent to that, um, the player's got a nice ship. It's easy to fly. It's very small, um, so it's, uh, it's it's kind of suitable for the very first experience. Yeah. Saw a little sneak preview of our console there. <laughs> I think he was making sure that the ship was spawning. So is there is there hangar three? Uh, it's always hangar three. It's always it's really it's always hangar yeah. three. Well, it's whenever, because um, I would go over to James's desk and he would he would be getting it ready. Um, and so when I was doing reviews on it and everything like that, it's always hangar three. I don't know why, but yeah. but for well, this one, it's well, always well, well, he's running his own private server. There's no other player, so correct. No but, but but no matter what, it's always hangar three. So it, if I was doing it at James's desk, even if we were we tried out different ships in in the beginning, it was always Hangar Three. But on live servers, it'll be it'll be, be whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. And okay, uh, 
people are like they don't know why. No, that's what it's part of what happens when you build a systemic universe. It's you're building all these individual systems. Oh, well, it's, here I mean, we go. Hangar one and two could be like the oversized hangars. I I don't know how this one is exactly you know set up. Mm -hmm. So it might be that those are the extra large hangars that are are set up. Todd, are you admitting that every single game developer doesn't know the work and content of every single other game developer? Yes. <laughs> It's, it's also, I, I don't know how some of these stuff, how it's, I know how Diabetic it's hooked up from universe. a technical standpoint. I don't know what order they Oh my it up god. In. Right. Just as long as it works and, <laughs> and it's duct taped together, you know. And... I got a, got, a, got, a, got, a, got a camera one. Views and opinions of Todd Pappy do not represent those of Cloud <laughs> and Premium Games, Robert Space Industries, or its subsidiaries. Hi, right, back. We really need that disclaimer reclaimer, Tom. <laughs> you didn't hear this, but there was this utterly dejected British, sorry. All right, so we're now in our hangar. We've now jumped into our Pisces. Yeah, with this, to me, there's still some work that needs to be done. Like when you request, you know, um, uh, basically to take off, like to me, there should be klaxons and warnings and right. other lights spinning, you know, going off. Um, and what, did, what do you mean? VO for it to be, for you to take off safely should be at the end once the doors are actually open versus at the beginning. Ah, you know, so okay, still some true, true. That needs to happen. And not every hangar is the top loading hangar. Correct, we've so, got vertical yeah. as well as horizontal. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, if you didn't, if, if this were your first time, you didn't know there were there was a door way up, would you Correct. even look up? Yeah. Well, they, this, this is why we teach them to um, hold the Z key down and just look around before they actually take off, because yeah, you, for, for Todd, it's always Hangar 3, but for the public, it could be anything. So it could be front door, in yeah. which case you see it fine. But if not, if you've got a, a top-loading hangar, then, yeah, you need to know to look up. So Something to add to that. Yeah, we added that. Yeah, if you could your list. So what, what is he doing in the console right here? There was some weird LODs. Well, you could see them. They were like green, oh, yeah, green ships. Up. Oh, to somebody who doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, it's it's basically we have... Um, there were green uh, cityscape there. Things off in the distance that will show... Uh, designer or um, kind of arted boxes. Gotcha. Um, so it, it basically helps us um, run it uh, a consistent frame rate. Mm -hmm. So he was just going through and turning that stuff off. So it, it actually gave a, a decent looking s skyline. Represents what the player would see. Yeah, versus exactly. Versus what he's seeing in a depth build. Okay. Exactly. All right, so we're leaving Area 18. Where are we going? Mm -hmm. Um, so at the moment, the players look so at Sam left being all fancy, and we're giving them just a basic flight around Area 18. Um, it's it's nighttime at the moment, so you don't get to see very much. But the idea is that you get an idea of how to fly your ship because this is the first time that the player's been in their ship. So um, the path is pretty straight. You can see objective markers appearing, giving them new new places to go to, so we keep them pretty much in line so they're not appearing off to the side and you're having to sort of swerve your way around. Um, but we're also popping up hints that give them basic controls. So, so you know, at the start you'll say, hey, you need to raise your landing gear, and this is your throttle and how to adjust your speed, and um, just just various base, basic hints like that, just so they get an idea of how to this, fly. This, this looks so good at night time. Is there a way to always make sure a new player gets the nighttime art corp experience yes <laughs> yes because no it 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 so because the way but, it looks uh, is mean, the most I, important I thing every, of course well, of course basically because whenever we do the testing it's always spinning up a new server right so i would always get to bajini point and it's completely dark completely black and mm -hmm. and um so it, it's it's difficult to see so we still need to work you know through uh, Yes, Some issues. for folks in the chat, our clouds off. And again, this is this is an internal build. They probably uh, should have you set your imprint. Show yeah. the feature on, like we saw with the LOD stuff. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles you would normally see on live. Um, somebody in the chat was, <laughs> literally, I guess, I guess, I guess, in the <laughs> recording, he just noticed the clouds were off. Yeah. Um, one of the folks in chat w uh, mentioned that on some localized keyboards, uh, Z and Y are flipped. Uh, does that ch does that change the input? No, no. Well, it's it, sorry. It should be that 
Um, the game would know. Yeah, because it, it like with the German keyboards, Z and Y are, are flipped, but it should just be that the 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 placement of where it's actually at on the keyboards, it will be Y. It should be a Y instead of Z. Instead of Z, yes. Uh, and, and the text will will reflect that. Yes, it should. Okay. If it doesn't, then please let us know. And what's this video about? The new player experience. So, okay. I mean, for this, again, like we were just thinking, what are some of the basic things that we need to do? So, like James said, you know, raising landing gear, teaching them basic controls as far as, you know, speeding up, slowing down. Um, and then the, the next thing that was big that we needed to teach them was, was QT and, right. and how to actually QT. Yeah. So, um, Blue Minx in the chat was asking, why, why is he just flying around? randomly why explode? Isn't he just no. There? We're literally teaching the yeah. process. Yeah. yeah. So, and um, again, for this, I, I, I mean, Sam, Sam's going through and, and trying to make it look pretty and, and um, versus, you know, as an average player, you're going to be looking at it from your cockpit. You're going to be trying to speed the through. The NA game always says or, uh, Z, a speed run and it's a it. Y on your keyboard. Um, oh, shit. Okay. And, I mean, Usually our reviews take 30 minutes and maybe 10 of those are calling out notes and talking about, right. you know, um, any sort of blockers or anything like that. So I think James and I can get through this in what, 15 minutes, if that? Probably, yeah, yeah. pretty quick. So um, it's, it's usually a pretty quick experience. I get their flip, but Todd said that they would so work for, correctly. For example, like here, you know, right now you have a whole bunch of QT markers associated with this. Like again, one of the things that we were trying to do was strip away all of these, or or have it be that you didn't have enough fuel to to fly over there. So then he would have to come here, refuel, and then you know things are open to uh, the player. Um, there's other aspects in regards to the amount of missions that are shown to the player and and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. We we were conscious that once the player finishes the tutorial um, of the sort of um, the missions that would be available immediately afterwards. And while we couldn't get to all of them, we've hopefully, well, we've cut down the number and we've hopefully cut down some of the more difficult ones for new players. Um, mm. So they should be, they should have a more suitable selection than they would do previously, let's say. Well, and, and also, so if we talk about this, let's say, let's say you are a new, new player or you've maybe this is interesting it's on the dev build do you see this i don't remember if this was in in uh the ptu or not uh tutorial zero three part three hint zero two b exit qt2 do you think that this is something related to possibly the new version of quantum travel uh where we might have to actually exit it and it's not automatic could be you played this one patch okay if we do uh any sort of resets or wipes or anything like that. The idea would be... Or it's just labeled them. exit QT, like this is what you do after you exit QT. You put your landing gear down, you request landing. Player experience, that gets you to the same baseline that everybody else starts the game. If they ch don't choose a new player experience that is, and they just started and everything's reset, it gets everybody to the same baseline. And so, again, for our missions, we want to make sure that they... They branch out. It's not like you get you get you know forty choices in the very beginning. You'll have three, and then you do one, and then now right. that opens up two more, and now you have five available. So, like it's it, yeah. it's slowly doling those things out, yeah. and, and it's pretty standard. You know, lo exactly. lo lo logging features behind a wall until you like them. I see the key bindings on screen. Is that part of the? That is the contextual control aspect yep. that we were talking about, and also the um, and part of the contextual hints. So, um, because there's certain things that we wanted to teach or reinforce to the player all the time. Um, again, you know, if you haven't played the game in a while, or um, or you're coming back fresh. Uh, I mean, I think it was a relatively good tutorial. This, this allows us to gently remind you. What I, what I like about this is uh, you're, it, it's super basic. It gets all the basics out of the way. So you can always, you don't even, you don't have to point to a YouTube video for anybody, right? You just go, here you go. This is how to get yourself started. 
and go from there. Yeah, I think it maybe needs a little bounty mission. I think it maybe needs a little FPS in the future. But those with the flight combat and FPS combat and a lot of things, all that stuff is still so fluid and changing constantly. This is the base that they need. And then you add the layers onto it from here. When you've got them more locked in, we all know, again, I said this earlier, so some of you guys might be coming into the stream a little bit later. We all know that you're going to get out of your bed. You're going to go to the spaceport. You're going to take off and you're going to be able to land somewhere else, right? Like those are the things that we know that are in. Everything else is a mess. So everything else is a jarbled, uh, no way this is our long-term experience mess so they're not going to touch those and it makes sense not to touch those so so just being here is where i think it makes a whole lot of sense to to go with now uh some somebody in the chat brings up a good question is this all within a green zone or will or no it's what, not what you can get you can get killed reapers who decide to because all the new players are going along the yeah. same path mm -hmm. here it basically becomes a chow line to grievers it does Unfortunately, it does. Attention. So, it's it, right now. This is what we have. Oh my God, he's getting scanned. We continue to make it better, but we will roll this out to different landing zones. Um, obviously, from there, we'll also look at feedback on you know if if people are clubbing the baby seals over and over and over again, then we will institute other um, things to block that. Um, but again, we without. Uh, I mean, we had talked about putting it on a unique uh, planet that nobody could get to, nobody could QT to. It's 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 its own space. Like we had thought about that, and, and where, but it, that wasn't. That's not our game. Yeah. You know, and um, so we had those those conversations. And, and okay, that's kind of interesting. Um, not going to lie. That's not our game. Uh, you're going to get attacked. So, you know, every time there's an SCL, every time there's an ISC, I keep hearing more and more the exact opposite, uh, communication from the star citizen dev team to what basically the Reddit and spectrum are constantly narrative. They're trying to push and talked about it. Um, that's not our game, but it, it just didn't feel right. So uh, this is what we have. And, and so we need to build and tune for a game. Um, and obviously, I, I think, you know, the new player experience at Lorville versus the new player experience at, at Horizon will be a little bit different. But, you know, we're just trying to teach you the main concepts. Is, is the intention to develop a new player experience for the multiple landing zones? Yes. The intention is to take it to those multiple landing zones. I don't necessarily like that idea, but Would, okay. Uh, I mean, uh, it's no secret that our next star system is is, is Pyro. <laughs> can you can you see a version of the new? Now, I personally believe. Listen, the way he communicated to the the game's general idea overall is what I'm talking about. The new player tutorial, you should not be able to be attacked. Period. Like that's silly. And I, I think he's saying, you know, that's it is what it is. It's not our intention, but it is what it is. And uh, like I personally, I think that they should extend the uh, the armistice zone to all those little blips that they're flying to. But that's all. I would extend it a little bit. And then the thing is, is once you get to Baijini Point, though, yeah, it's an armistice zone, but that doesn't mean that people can't open fire. Right, they can. They just get punished for it. New player experience that exists in Pyro right now. Yeah, that. Uh, I mean, that that's a little bit more difficult, and I think that's something that you should not be able to start James in Pyro. And and, um, Thoughts and on I that? Were. I don't think you should be able to start choose Pyro as a starting point. I think I think that's silly, even even for for experienced players. I think you should have to go through the jump point. I think you should have to travel there. But the the problem with that is, is like, let's say you lose your spawn or whatever. You're, you're still, the way the game currently works is you're kind of stuck. 
uh, with your major landing zone, like your main landing zone. I think when you get to Pyro, you should be able to switch your home. Uh, as long as you're able to switch your home, like, stock landing zone, um, that would be good. They already said that Stanton would be the starting point a couple months ago, uh, but Pyro's, like, a year away, so the amount of things that can change. Like, what they say three, four, five months ago means nothing to what they actually release. So it's... You know, taking everything that they say and, and thinking that that's gold and thinking things aren't going to change is one of the silliest things you could do as a Star Citizen backer. I definitely listen to the things that they say, but when it comes down to them actually implementing anything, they have nothing implemented in terms of the starting point. 4.0 is not being worked on, right? Uh, all those things, right? Right. The actual 4.0 branch is not being worked on is what I mean, right? We have 3.19, we have 3.20. They're working on things like server meshing in a separate branch, but they're not, it's not integrated into the game dev or anything yet. Once that stuff comes in and they tell us what the, the point is, um, listen, I'm assuming we're going to start in Stanton and then fly over, but think about the the issue that there is if that does happen. Um, You want to change your your standard landing zone. And I think you can, obviously, right? You can immediately change from, let's say, Crusader to Crusader L1, right? But you always have that, like, initial home. It would be cool to change your home, I guess, after uh, you've gotten into the game. I think that that will have to be a thing that is a, is a thing at some point. But for now, maybe not. Maybe you don't pay, like landing fees or uh like inventory fees as much in your home down and, uh, you know re really stop pausing really this game this video has been out for hours um, you should have watched it yourself talk about all right like, right right now could have watched the video in, in yourself Pyro, like it should just be a guy that hands you a pistol and says good luck yeah <laughs> and like have yeah. you enjoyed your new player experience yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you choose to start in pyro so, uh, so I turned so, away. What are we doing now? Um, it, well, basically, it teaches you to store your ship. Oh. Yeah. And then James can go into more details on that. Yeah. Um, so when the player lands, um, they, they get out of their ship, and you, you're sort of um, asked, to, uh, asked to store it. And as soon as you store your ship, you've landed at Bargini Point. You've learned all kinds it's of stuff. And thank you so and, much. Uh, the, uh, yeah, that's, that's the ending point. So, yeah, there we go. I think I got it. Yeah. Is this hydration at 37? Is that what it says? Down yeah, so it, it allows you to go through and read about any of the oh, things the that we that we teach the player. Yeah. So you can you can refer back to it, and obviously for uh, you know in case you miss something or or want to read up you know more information on yeah. on that, then this allows. That's you cool. To, Again, I think that, that this was yeah. pretty good. Well, one thing we do throughout the new player experience is to point players towards the journal because the journal is uh, is a really good source of information not just during the new player experience but throughout it will teach you about law and crime yes yeah it does the, the law the crime stat and it also tells you those really good commodity alerts that nobody uses because they don't really do anything until invictus launch week i'm pretty excited for invictus launch week with the with the uh the journal entries there it might be good kind of stuff um, so pointing players to that early on gives them a tool which they can use um, throughout their time with Star Citizen. Mm -hmm. And um, then as uh, the new Moby Glass comes online, that mm -hmm. ideally that will free you to do all manner of uh, yeah. additional things so. to yeah. help people. Yeah. So sort of the, like like uh, the the thing the thing that got me the whole time is the text on the text is not being able to reposition the windows and, and stuff like that. That's yeah. Yeah, like, like, Todd, like Todd said, because this is the version of what we have right now where we build, we build on top of that, we build on top of that as new features come on, yeah. we add those yeah. in. I think it's that a totally the fine start. Star Citizen's development. The difference is, is the communication that we're getting here in this show, like Jared's straight up saying, like, this is bad, right? Them going, we know it's bad. 
are you going to know it's bad when 319 goes live? Or are they going to plaster new player experience across the stream? Uh, you know, streamers, YouTubers going, new player experience. Oh, it's so good. Um, you know, things like that. And, and pointing people to it. And then there's text over text and you can't, literally can't read the thing. Right? So when, when you want to, when the effort for acquiring new players by the marketing team is so heavy, that they, you know, teams that distribute mineables and usables across the universe are now working on a new player experience over uh, actually adding things to the game. You know, obviously, listen, new player experience very important, I think, as well. The difference is, is how they're going to sell it. And it's not. This isn't the new player experience yet, right? This isn't the finished version. This is the first version. This is what it is. So I think a lot of us are looking at it going, oh, this isn't very good. Um, but I do think it did a very good job of if you knew nothing, you now know something, right? If you knew nothing, you now know something. And they want to kill the Moby Glass and probably mostly put things in there, change stuff like that. So we'll see. I thought it was good. Um, when I played through it, I was just like, okay, whatever. I mean, it doesn't do anything for me, right? So. I have no excitement over it. I don't really think it's like so perfect that you just like point them at the new player experience and just say, this is everything you need. You still need like a Captain Burke's new player guide, you know? It's, well, yeah. And, and uh, I mean, but exactly. If you can get your ship and take off, I think they've watched like new players play streams and see them like have no clue how to take off. Right, like that's legitimately a problem, and I think they got there. Who's building, you know, new Moby Glass framework? We'll take that framework and and adjust it, you know, from a visual standpoint, but then continue to build on that for the persistent universe needs. And so it's it's basically we just need to wait, you know. But we felt like um, the new player experience and and what we were able to develop right now was good enough. You know, obviously there's still some bugs that we need to work through, yeah, it's but good enough. it was good enough to, to introduce and make sure that, you know, we can actually, uh, lower the learning curve that, that basically new players run into all the yeah. time. And I think they achieved that goal. So that was a look at what's coming in. It's got its problems, but they achieved uh, the goal. We talked about maybe, you know, adding a, a prompt to, Tell you to put your helmet on before you you, you, know, you go out. Will that make 319, is, or is that going to have to be another? I don't think that will make 319, um, but it's possibility for a for a future uh, patch. Yeah. Okay. Um, until then, we'll have to rely on our wonderful community and the guides and whatnot. To well, and and I, I think the other thing that needs to be stated there is is in the on the front end. There's an actual button there that will take you. It's a hyperlink that will take you out and it'll take you to the guide you know, on, um, on the Robert Space Industries uh, website, and, and you'll be able to request a guide if you want. Okay. Um, yeah, so don't that, let so perfection be the enemy of better. That's a good quote. On OpenPTU right now, uh, any, any Star Citizen backer can, can copy their account over the PTU and test it uh, now. Uh, it's coming when Not 319 yet, releases, hopefully sometime in the next week. Uh, it's as close as I'll get to a date. Um, let's talk a little bit. About it's all marketing, boys. It's coming out no matter what state it's in. So don't worry about the future. Uh, where do we, we've said we've mentioned a couple things already, but but summarize, where do we want to take this in the future? What do we already know is on the menu that, that whenever we can get to it, when features and time and everything collide to make it happen? Uh, well, we can do it real quick, I think. Um, taking it to the different landing zones, um, taking certain uh, feedback that we, that we acquire um, yep. that we need to f basically uh, flesh out more um, and adjust that. Uh, and then long term, it would be thinking about, okay, do we need to do short little mission training yes, for absolutely. Combat, whether that be FPS or ship? You need um, both. Do we need to do it for EVA? Do I think, and you know what I think that they should do? I think they should give the player the choice. Like, uh, in your Moby Glass, you have an additional set of missions now, and you can either choose 
to do them or not, but those missions will be there to teach you uh, EVA, um, you know, general ship combat, general FPS combat. Right? Some little starter missions. Exactly. And it gives you a little bit more money, maybe, even. You need to do it for um, missile locks, so on and so forth. So, like, uh, everything that's, you know, or do we need to do it for mining or salvaging or any of our gameplay loops? Um, and the, the thing that I find very weird, though, is that it's in the PU. This is the thing about Star Citizen that I just don't understand. I just don't get it. What is wrong with when you click the menu icon to join a tutorial where it, like, oh my god, there's a fly flying around here. Um, why isn't it in a separate thing by yourself, learning these things, mission by yourself, learning these things, and the moment you're done with them, there's a loading screen. The only thing that is problematic is the loading screen for them. They just don't want the loading screen. Why? I'll never understand that. Why make it so much more complicated? Ah, but yeah, we did our tutorial in the game, guys. See how much cooler we are? So you don't have to. Help the player out the best way possible would probably be to separate it out and then load us into the PU at the same place. Right. And so do we do these small little snippets of? I thought they said something about how they didn't want to separate players from their friends. What do you need your friend? You don't even know how to play. What, are you going to join your friends when you don't know how to play? Just go through the tutorial. It's 15, 20 minutes. No big deal. Of missions that you can load up and you can kind of rinse and repeat those over and over again. Like, like, like a combat mission and then a... Yeah, a deliver a cargo delivery mission kind of thing. I mean, it it could be even smaller than that. Like, okay, I want to practice um, missile lock. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, how you know spawn the scenario? Here's the scenario. Uh, you get missile lock. They fire. You fire flares, and uh, the the missile still hits you. So, you know, you we're loving we're loving that experience. Pod. Like I'm sitting there, and I can. <laughs> practice okay this is how i do missile lock or star citizen 318 okay you've got a missile coming let's in, go shoot that down or shoot down three of them in x amount of time so just ways for you to uh harden your skills and and um work on very specific uh, scenarios that might not opportun might not spawn themselves I I unless it's isn't elite dangerous tutorial single player isn't elite dangerous single player in battle or something like that so um, we're, we're, That's we're, a single-player game, it's right? It's a shorter show this week than normal. Um, we all got places to go. I do want to ask you, the first version of the tutorial, the old gunny thing, that was instance. It was, it was essentially arena commander. It was, you could say it was a simulation kind of thing. This is obviously not. This is in the PU. Was there consideration of, of making the new player experience a simulation? You do it and then you step out of the sim pod and you're just safe Thank and you. completely isolated that whole time and nobody can mess you up? Or why did we, why was it important that we put you in the PU? I'm glad they from asked the this. You start. So, yes, we, we talked about it and, and um, that was one of, the, one of the initial pitches that I did was that it was sim pod only. And then, you know, after you get out of it, then now you're in a safe area. Obviously, there's certain aspects, you know, like um, getting out of the hangar and crashing your ship and then going to the medical center and then so on and so forth. Like there were certain things there that um, were not okay. new user friendly. Um, and so but at the same time, we are we are an MMO, you know, and we want to make sure that we don't isolate the players um, from their friends or from other things that, uh, you know, they could experience on. For 15 minutes? I think it's okay. I think it's okay to isolate players for 15 minutes. But because your game is too complicated, right? Like, let's look at New World. New World did the tutorial in the game with everybody around. For the most part, right? And that's, that's okay. But there was a section of it that I believe was separated out.
And then you come in and you're doing like your first step missions. But the difference is, is like I press like three buttons along with WASD. That's it. I'm like clicking my mouse and pressing E. Right? It's not, I'm, I don't need Alt N to get out of the, the, ca the, the hangar and all that stuff. So it, I, I don't know. I, I just don't, I don't buy that one and I don't think it's a good idea and that's okay. They're, they're you do what you do, what you do but you know, generally so, so the, it should have been in the sim, I think. Of, that's my opinion. I don't think it's a secret. There's a certain amount of I don't need it, so whatever. Comes with the persistent universe yeah. and we're not totally 100% against chaos. You know, no, it, we, we like that. We yeah. like that emergent nature, the, the, it, the, the, how other players affect things. In a tutorial, it, exactly. though? Exactly. I think if, if we teach them, you know, hey, this is what it... You know, works. Why are you making a tutorial if if you wanted to have emergent gameplay in it? I I, I don't know. I'm so confused by this. It's like in a in a vacuum, you know. Then it's 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 not yeah. it's not us, you know. And so um, the what the are most you? We don't even know what this we did is was, yet. Oh my all right, god! We, we said all right. This is the Habs. Now it might be that you know in the future you're on a ship going to one thousand percent. This is going to move to a sim pod when they have that stuff in the game. When they're able to play Arena Commander within the PU, which I think was always intended, if they ever do that, one million percent this thing is going to end up in the PU, uh, in, in Arena Commander, or, or however that they however they do it. It's going to be separated out. It's it's There's no way this is a good idea. You can bring the player into emergent gameplay after 20 minutes, it's okay. It's cool. okay. You know, whatever uh, major landing zone is going to be your home, you know, and then at that point in time, you get off and and uh, we still teach you how to get to your habs or, or away from your hab. And so it, it, there are certain things that we know that we need to train. It's just going to be how do we go about it and, and, and do it. But I think a, a lot of the work that James and Sam and, and the rest of the team have done um, you know, on creating this uh, is basically laying the foundation for anything that we do in the future. Cool. Well, that's about it, Todd. James, is, is, there, is there something else I haven't touched? Is there some aspect of this that we want to make sure folks understand before, before I let you go? Um, I, I guess for me, it, it's been more a labor of love. I, I, I did the initial pitch of this two years ago. Jesus Christ! So, yeah, like it, for for me, this is this is something that two I've been years to ago, see for quite a while. And now that's not the same because people are going to grab onto that. That's not to say that this took two years of continuous no. work. No. It is there's it, this has to go into the schedule and into the resource well, pool it, and it, yeah, and and there's certain fundamental things that we wanted in place first before we would do it. So. Um, it's just that, you know, there's other higher, higher priorities or there's other things, but this, this allowed us to, you know, align, you know, everything comes in, in line and we understand that, okay, certain features, you know, on, and because for example, like the hints and the training, like that was on the actor team, but they had other priorities that they right. needed to do. And so this allowed us to, to go through and, and get it, um, done but like you know the initial thought process of it and the initial document that i wrote was yeah about two years ago i i i mentioned that because there's a uh there's a misapprehension uh that all aspects of a game are worked on continuously at the same time in conjunction yeah. and stuff like this it, it's it's they hear oh you're working on this whatever it is in one month and it means well, well it's it's been eight months since we heard about they've been working on it for eight months and that's not true teams get pulled off there are dependencies that come up we need new tech to be developed before we can continue our work there's any number of reasons Correct. people depart the project new they they should i think they should kill the progress tracker i think what we have as far as uh roadmap roundup what's coming in the next patch i think that's all we need people join the project with new ideas and we rethink you know, oh, well, that's a better idea than what we were doing. You know, it's like this. Uh, we give this really hard to read uh, progress tracker, and now we don't understand why people don't understand game development when they don't understand game development. It's just like, what the heck, dude? There's, all, there's, there's no end to the reasons why development 
bobs and weaves and so like that's why I, I don't need to know how games game work. I don't need to know how but the game I, works. I, I don't need that, to know how yeah, you make it. No, yeah, I mean, I just need to know what's coming next, what I need to look at, what I need to give feedback on. I guess it, for the alpha state of the game, and then I need to get excited about things that I don't that. I need to get excited about. I don't care if I understand or not. It doesn't matter. None of that matters. We're all paid money to hopefully play a game. When are they going to take that aspect of things into consideration? We did not play money to learn how game development works. Ah, some of you guys like that stuff. I don't want to take away from that. But in, in reality, in the end, what did you pay money for to hopefully play the game? From, from James's standpoint, I think you started on this, what? Three four months ago, yeah, late last year. So, you know, and and it, like he, he he was the one that did the initial mission and then calling out to MFT and saying, "Hey, we need this, we need this, we need this." And then you know, it'd be myself and and um, Phil and Jonathan from production standpoint going around chasing up people saying, "Is that okay, you, Phil? We need this feature. When is this coming online?" Um, you know, there was there was some new tech that had to be created for like mission that starts, you know, um, basically when the player initiates into the world. Like there, yeah, there nice. were certain fundamental things that were not there, and then there were definitely some gotcha moments when you were going through and we're like, oh, we missed this, you know, oh, we need this, or you know, and with a lot of these things. Um, for the most part, the way that we do our, our feedback, you know, or, or our play tests, we do a lot of those via um, uh, seeing, uh, seeing the PTU, you know, and seeing Ibukati play and, and um, it's- <laughs> What just that's, happened? So it's the hardcore, the, the whole hardcore, desk but moved. We for this feature, like the people wouldn't be doing that or needing that, so. Um, you know, Todd so didn't miss did a beat either. And we watched them. Yes, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Some, yeah. some real gotcha moments, huh, James? <laughs> Certainly were. Some just, just things that surprised you? It, well, I'm looking at one right now, yeah. <laughs> All right, that's it, everybody. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us on this week's episode of Star Citizen Live Game Dev, uh, the improved new player experience. Thank you to Todd and James for taking time out of the end of your, your week. Uh, 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 thank you to Todd's uh, 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 offspring who were in our studio audience. Uh, who were forced to hang around, hang out and, and, and see us do this. Uh, they just I, think, I don't know if I met Todd's kids. I met, who did I meet? I met someone's kids at Gamescom one time. Red. <laughs> and I love it. We, didn't, we don't have a camera yeah. on them. Um, join us back here next week. Uh, uh, inside Star Citizen, it, you can probably must be guess so much older what it's now. about. Holy shit. I didn't see if I was allowed to say it early, so I'm not going to say it. But, I mean, if you watch the very end of this week's ISC, you can probably guess what next week's ISC is all about. And then there is no uh, Star Citizen Live uh, next week because I'll be on a plane to Belgium for uh, BCon, the Belgian community's uh, annual convention. Uh, so you can see me over there. I'm sure there's a, probably a live stream or something I'll pop up on. So for Todd and for James and for me, thanks for watching. Uh, take care. Keep an eye out on all things 319 on the robertspaceindustries.com website and, of course, our Star Citizen socials on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok, which is blowing up, apparently. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I thought I had an ending for this, and I don't. Bye, everybody. Bye. I mean, in the end, I think... That was a good look at the new player tutorial, and it, it I think, is decent. Um, it's a good start, and hopefully they keep building on it, and that's what we say about everything that they work on. The thing is, they're probably not going to do that for a while. So, yeah. Um, I think it's going to stay the way it will be for a little bit, and then maybe they'll decide to add more to it. And again, I think that eventually it will absolutely move to like some out-of-game thing uh because they are they're honestly just inviting uh griefing of new players and stuff it's kind of weird that that that's just a weird aspect of it but whatever uh we'll have to i'm gonna skip anyway exactly so doesn't really matter not to me at least